the office at around 6 a.m. to beat the traffic and just get a nice workout in. We're getting breakfast at this really cute cafe. I got some crepes, iced Americano, snack at around 10 a.m. And 11.30 is usually when I eat lunch. And at 12 o'clock, I get some more caffeine. I like to de-stress at the end of the day and today I booked a massage appointment. Big life update. I got laid off yesterday. <laughs> The massive tech companies like Google, Microsoft, Meta and Amazon have been laying off staff. A move that is simply made to cut costs, but it sounds like the move of companies that are on the verge of collapse, which isn't the case just by looking at their financials. The tech sector is not in good shape, with a number of high profile companies making layoffs in recent years. If you want some grim reading, this handy website compiles all the unfortunate souls into one place. Laying off this many employees is the type of move you would expect from, say, Peloton, who are struggling to sell their products and have been losing money year over year. For companies like Google, Meta and Microsoft, 10% of their workforce is in the thousands. For Amazon, they've laid off 18,000 people. But in most cases, these tech giants are still making profits in the billions. And most of the higher ups aren't at risk of losing their jobs anytime soon. It's not just these companies, of course, as other tech firms making layoffs in the last few years include Spotify, Netflix, Stripe, Klarna, Salesforce, HP and Twitter. Big tech firms like these have had some high profile failures recently. The internet really doesn't need another Stadia was bad video, but for anyone unfamiliar, this was a streaming service for video games launched in 2019. With a global pandemic and everyone stuck at home, this should have been a slam dunk, but a terrible business model kept users away. Imagine paying for a streaming service, then having to buy a movie you want to watch. Coupled with a lack of marketing and a service that was missing promised features, this stumbled out of the gate and never went anywhere. After just over three years, Stadia was shut down. They did refund everyone though, not out of the goodness of their hearts. This was to avoid a class action lawsuit. And this obviously isn't Google's only failure. Amazon announced they lost billions on Alexa despite the product selling well. I'm not sure if it's down to mismanagement or lack of vision, but to put billions into a product that never once turned a profit indicates something is amiss, despite the technology being really impressive. Microsoft may not have as many recent disasters, but the failure of Windows Phone and Xbox One are a friendly reminder that not everything they make is set to be the next Windows. More recently, Microsoft has been trying to re-enter the smartphone business with the Surface Duo, a dual screen phone that is difficult to use, using dated software with a bad camera and weak specs. And of course there's Meta, they're making a bad VR game for a market that doesn't exist yet, when better alternatives already exist. And these games haven't lost billions in the making. The headset is good though. But with companies wasting this much money, employees are the ones losing their jobs. No heartfelt apology from the founder will alleviate the stress and depression that this creates. While I was making this video, The Verge put out an article that covers the same topic. So I'm going to borrow some of their points. Sorry. So looking at the revenue for each tech giant, the CEOs can still afford a yacht or two, but they could either not be making as much money as they projected or made less than the previous year, which on paper looks like a failure. For investors, the performance is more important. It's not about if they made money, it's about how much they made. According to The Verge, each big tech company will have billions of cash in reserve anyway, with Microsoft apparently having a six-figure sum in reserve per employee. But as for investors, they're looking at the operating value rather than the money in the bank too. So layoffs are made to reduce the operating cost. Amazon's net sales increased 15% to $127 billion in the third quarter of 2022 up from $110 billion in the third quarter of 2021. But the fourth quarter for the company was not as strong as Wall Street had hoped, as they were expecting $156 billion. But Amazon expected their sales to be between $140 and $148 billion. Numbers like these are sort of meaningless to us. Imagine working for a company that has projected to make sales of $148 billion in one quarter, and yet 18,000 people still lose their jobs. They're still profitable too, and have been since 2015. It's well known that layoffs of staff can cost more than it saves. Each company is spending millions on severance, benefits and vacation days to the newly laid off staff. Salesforce has laid off 8,000 employees, but they would receive 5 months of pay, health insurance, career resources and other benefits. But the chief exec did blame himself and took responsibility. So happy job hunting. Microsoft and Salesforce are examples of companies that went on massive hiring sprees due to the increased profits they saw due to the pandemic. With profits being so high, they assumed the good times would keep on rolling. Layoffs also lead to a drop in share price and lowers morale for the remaining employees. Plus there's the paperwork and additional training for the existing staff to pick up the slack. It feels like a knee-jerk reaction to lower the overhead rather than a strategic move. It gives the appearance that the company is steadying the ship, but this may not be the case. The idea of working at a company like Google or Microsoft used to be enticing. These companies offer plenty of perks and are at the forefront of technology, changing the way we live and interact with the world, innovating in new ways to keep us glued to our screens. There may be plenty of free food and yoga classes on campus, but you can get laid off at the drop of a hat. And for Google, these layoffs are not based on performance. All of this makes it look like they care, but they don't. 
This is here to entice employees to the company, not because they care about employee well-being. Google laid off a mother who was holding her newborn baby in her arms that was just a few hours old when she found out she was part of the layoffs, and she didn't know if she would be getting the maternity leave benefits from the company. And I forgot to mention, she had been at the company for 10 years. In the past, there have been reports of Silicon Valley employees living in their cars or in motorhomes, as buying a home is simply too expensive. While van life may be a growing trend, for some this is not by choice. I fully understand the housing market is to blame for the high house prices, but this is an aspect of working in Silicon Valley you won't see on a careers website. Companies like Google and Amazon have had their fair share of walkouts too, with many attempts being made to stop workers from unionising, but thankfully that hasn't fully succeeded. An even darker side of layoffs are the risk of people taking their own life. Not just for those who have lost their jobs, but even for the existing staff too. One employee got laid off while she was on a business trip for Google. She woke up one morning to prep for a meeting, but was locked out of her Google account. If only they could use an email service to let everyone know about what's going on. Sure, layoffs happen, but to be handled this poorly is just ridiculous. Staff obviously have a lot of unanswered questions from Google, and are now on edge, as they can be laid off at any moment, regardless of how long they've been at the company or how they perform. Something tells me big tech firms aren't thinking about the employee's mental health when they're reading the balance sheet because Google laid off the head of mental health and well-being. Basically the perfect metaphor. Google, please don't demonetize this video.